Greetings. My name is Reverend Ken Peterkin, the minister at First Congregational Church in Essex, United Church of Christ. We like to say that whoever you are or wherever you are on life's journey, that you are welcome here because we believe that God, God has created you in his own unique and uh, beloved way. So we're glad you're here. Uh, friends, uh, we will have a short worship today. And I pray that my message to you will have meaning and uh, offer you a perspective on what I believe is both a responsibility and a privilege here in our lives. Uh, we follow shortly with a beautiful duet by our choir director, Sherry Wilcox and Scott, her partner. And I want to thank Kevin Show for the beautiful piano that he provides to us each week. So friends, uh, I pray that we are a source of inspiration and that you feel loved through the prayers and the hopes and the dreams of not only me, but our loving worship community. So without any further ado, Sherry and Scott, please take it away as we hear what a friend we have in Jesus. for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw other others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, uh, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. He said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? And they said to him, because no one has hired us. Well, he said to them, 
you also go into the vineyard. Now when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now, when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I'm generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Here ends the reading. So my friends, that phrase that Jesus speaks, so the last will be first and the first will be last. Let, my, let, me, let me ask you friends, top of the food chain, Connecticut residents, how's that phrase playing on you? That the last will be first and the first will be last. It has some serious significance for most of us, let's face it. We are first in a great many areas. Our privilege, rooted in geographic, racial, economic, national, and ableness, places the many of us in a place that this scriptural saying could be troublesome, don't you think? And in this section of the book of Matthew, Jesus emphasizes that phrase more than just once. The first, or the last will be first, and the first will be last. I wonder, when, for Jesus, will this come true? Was that a promise made for some time in the future? Like, is this something that is promised for the hereafter? Or was the promise meant to be a current state of affairs and a, a place that, of course, resides in Jesus's and in God's opinion and heart? I think it could be a troubling matter because we strive to be number one, don't we? Competition is set up early in schools for kids to see who can get the best grades well, and who can win the race and who can be the class president. We are socialized that winners are the best. Win and the world is opened up to you. Now it was on the day of the big race and Usain Bolt was gonna run against a cheetah, the world's fastest animal capable of reaching speeds of up to 70 miles an hour. And people knew that Usain Bolt did not stand a chance, but they watched the race anyway. At last, they were off. And of course, in a matter of seconds, the race was over. Amazingly, Bolt came out victorious. You know why? Because cheetahs never win. Terrible, huh? Well, let's get back to the scripture. I want you to deeply consider then this phrase of Jesus's. The last will be first and the first will be last. Let me remind you that Jesus had a thing. He had a thing for the poor in spirit and for the mourners and for the meek, for those who hungered and thirsted for righteousness. He had a thing for the merciful and the pure in the heart. He had a thing for peacemakers and for those persons who will be ridiculed or doubted or treated poorly, for those people who make a stand in his name their efforts would be seen by Jesus as holy. I tell you something, all people can certainly show concern for the meek. All people can show a concern for the downtrodden. But not all people are willing to put themselves on the line for them, 
In fact, a great many people who are on top of the food chain pay lip service to Jesus' concerns. A great many people hide, parroting the most righteous of teachings while all along looking for ways to disassemble efforts, especially by the church, to answer Jesus' call. It's something like amendments to a law. Sneakily, they are added after the fact that take the teeth out of the teaching, take the teeth out of the actions, take the teeth out of the ferocity of Jesus' concerns. And let me advise you, while you may think that Jesus is all rainbows and puppy dogs, he is a fierce protector of the last. And why not? Does the first among us need charity or affirmation on a regular basis, on top of the wealth and the affirmation already received on the daily basis? Yes, I do need to know that I am loved. Amen. God, thank you. I love that you tell me that. But do I need to be showered again and again? Recognizing being high on the food chain and at my getting here was never about me doing it all. To get there has shown me that if for no other reason, if I wasn't religious, if I wasn't faithful, that I really should get down on my knees and give thanks and then devote a significant portion of my adult life to giving back and not being afraid of allowing other people different than me to have power and for them to exercise it without fear. This is where I understand Jesus' teaching to be about in the here and the now. That phrase, the, the, last, the first will be last and the last shall be first. I understand that it is my and my fellow Christians' responsibility and privilege, yes, I said privilege, to make this teaching so. So as I asked at the beginning, was this teaching to be about a current state of affairs? I'm here to tell you, yes. It's about the here and the now. And it isn't about just making noise or declaring solidarity or looking good for the camera. It needs to be about my heart. It needs to be about my soul. It needs to be about my mind. It needs to be about how I treat others and how I stop fearing about losing my place in the food chain. It isn't going anywhere, by the way, any soon. I gotta remember that. This is something to remember. Personal power and dignity is not some finite commodity bequeathed upon me and those like me. And I also have to remember that there will never be a time when we can put down the effort to lift others up. There will always be an outcast. It seems to be the way of humanity to put someone in the place of last. So, my friends, if you are top of the food chain, or close. <laughs> I really don't think you need to worry about this teaching. I'm pretty certain you can fend on your own for a pretty long time. I do, though, I do, I do, I do, I pray for your security, but I also pray that you lay down your fears and you open your heart and you let it be so that the last shall be first. My friends, may you celebrate God's blessings and may you then be a blessing to this world. This world, as I like to say, is a place of great need but great worthiness. Amen. So thank you for hearing my words, and I pray that uh, truly it is a privilege to care for others 
and to serve. My friends, would you gather in some moments of prayer with me? And there will be silent time allowed and also the Lord's Prayer following. Would you bow your heads in prayer with me? Gracious God, in such a beautiful community as ours, uh, we pray that we realize um, the blessing, and whether it is maybe not a blessing, but it is how we have landed in life, or we have worked hard in life. Whatever it is, we are in this incredible community, safe and secure, beautiful and bountiful. We pray that we offer you the appropriate thanks. We do so now, and we lift up our lives to you that we may be a witness to your power and that we may then serve others with all our hearts and minds and bodies, with all our strength, with your leading. Lord, we reach out to the people on the west coast of the United States with these terrible fires that are consuming lives, literally lives, we know, God. We pray for families everywhere, and for those people living through the terror, whether it be their end or if they're injured. Lord, we know there is a great deal of destruction, and so we pray. For people in the way of the hurricanes that are coming our way on a more regular basis, we pray for families to find their way out of that destructive force, to survive and that somehow they can find the blessing in being alive after such a thing, even if they lose much of what they once had. We pray, O oh Lord, how we might be able to be of assistance to them. Help us to search that out and then truly offer gifts to care for those people in the fires and those people in the hurricanes. And we lift up our hearts to everybody nearby and people around the world and people in our nation where this COVID is just insidious. Where almost 200,000 of our brothers and sisters have died. And so many others are suffering in the aftermath of having this disease. We thank you for those people on the front lines of health care. May they be lifted up and may they be cared for because of their great care for us. We pray for our friend Mary Lawrence recovering from her tibia fracture. Uh, we pray for Nancy Miller back at home at Essex Meadows. Uh, we pray for um, the, the glory of our friend Kevin who brings us music and to Sherry who sings and Scott as well. We thank you for the gifts of people who support this church in a financial way and who pray for us. And Lord, I pray and I give you good thanks for those people who have prayed for me and asked for your assistance in leading me to lead this lovely and wondrous church. I pray for everyone who is maybe in fear of, um, of poor health or everyone who perhaps um, is just anxious because of the state of our world. Uh, I pray, O oh Lord, that everyone finds uh, resolve and finds a place to reside within your heart in times of meditation and prayer. Lord, we come to you now for that in silence. Hear us, O oh Lord, as we pray.
we now share together that which you taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And amen. Well, here are some uh, announcements that I think are pertinent to you all. I've been having some fun with some of the kids at, uh, in the church. We have a regular Tuesday afternoon meeting where we get on Zoom and I tell a Bible story and then we get to share our toys with each other. That's pretty fun. So thank you kids, that's a lot of fun. I wanna remind everyone that we have our uh, White Fragility book discussion on Wednesdays at 4 p.m. We publish the Zoom uh, link in nearly everything on devotions and in Flash and in passages. They're there. Look for them. They're there. I promise. Um, and I also want to announce something very new. We will be having a Wednesday evening, 7.30 p.m. prayer time. I will be publishing... Uh, beginning on uh, Monday morning, uh, or maybe even before that, um, an email address where you can send in prayers to the church. And on Wednesday evening, you can join in with me on Zoom. We'll have that other address up there as well. At that Zoom uh, uh, session, we'll have us, um, you will not be seen nor will you be heard, but you can be present as I say prayers that have been sent in by church members and non-church members alike. So, starting this Wednesday, 7.30 p.m., please look for the link to that Zoom in all of our publications that go out to you via email, okay? And you can, of course, send in a prayer yourself using the email that I provide. Please join us on Sunday morning at 9.30. There's another Zoom link to get to the coffee hour. We have coffee, coffee hour, coffee hour. Let's do that on Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. Join us. We just sit and chat for about 30 minutes, okay? And I thank you for watching Worship via YouTube. If you access it on Facebook, or if you're watching on the cable station, welcome. We're glad to have you. Um, but uh, thank you for watching Worship. We appreciate your presence. Uh, Mary Lawrence Bickford remains at Gladeview, where she is recovering from her shattered tibia. Please keep her in your prayers. Um, I uh, am doing a funeral on the beach this Sunday. Just you know that I... I'm out in the community doing things for different people. Um, on Monday through Thursday, I, I send out um, a devotion to you every day. I hope you get meaning out of that and some hopefulness out of that all. This Thursday, the 24th, I will be having surgery on this wrist and hand. I'm getting carpal tunnel surgery on Thursday the 24th. So um, I'll be just slightly out of sorts for a couple days. So just know that. And also for you to know that um, our uh, secretary, our administrative assistant, Karen Burson, is now working Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. She's picking up a couple other um, uh, jobs, uh, helping Rick with House and Grounds things, and she's also scheduling, taking over scheduling and planning for the soup kitchen responsibilities that comes, that Millicent has been doing for 20 years, for crying out loud, and she is, uh, she needs a break. <clears throat> uh, the boiler at the church is being relined um, very soon. It's a inex pretty inexpensive thing, uh, but it adds to the life and to the efficiency of the boiler. So that's being happening. Please, if you can, 
let me know if you can be present to help me do some landscape work around the church. I need to remove, to uh, move, to uh, reduce some of the landscaping because if you've never noticed, you go down to the street and you cannot see our church. We are overgrown. So we're going to do a little bit of work to allow ourselves to look a lot more neat and to be viewable in the first place, okay? So uh, friends, um, may God's blessing be for all of you, I pray, and I thank you once again for you being here. My friends, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be yours this day and forevermore. Amen.